Okay, so the Ahsoka trailer has created a whole lot of questions and speculations, but what really created more buzz than anything else are the supposed villains of the show, namely the two dark side users. But just who exactly are they and what exactly are they looking for? Well, in this video, we're going to cover what we know about these characters so far and some theories that might clue us in into more details. So let's get started. Starting off with the basics, we know that the male dark side user played by Ray Stevenson goes by the name of Balin Skull. And fun fact, I recently found out that the actor was also the voice actor for Gar Saxon in Rebels. So this really is a Rebels show through and through. The female dark side user goes by the name of Shin Hati, played by Ivana Sakno. And besides the fact that both of them seem to have orange red lightsaber blades, that's really all we know about them. But we still might be able to get some clues from some legend source material, specifically Heir to the Empire, which was also mentioned in the trailer. As heir to the Empire. Now, if you're not familiar with Heir to the Empire, it's a book written by Timothy Zahn, and it's part of a trilogy that details the rise and fall of Thrawn in the New Republic era. And so you can be sure that Ahsoka will draw a lot of inspiration from it. But what could be a direct inspiration for Balin is the character of Joris Chabawith. To give you a little context, Joris Chabawith in the book was the mad clone of a dead Jedi Master, and if you look at their character designs, it's not too dissimilar. While Balin certainly has a more kept and chiseled look, you can see how Joris' character design might have informed Balin's look. But what is even more interesting is actually Joris' background story detailed in the book Outbound Flight and how that might come to inform Balin's story. The original Joris Chabawith was a Jedi Master during the Clone Wars and according to legends, he was the one who spearheaded the Outbound Flight Project. And the Outbound Flight Project was really a mission to travel to the unknown regions and beyond, intended to be a colonizing project consisting of a dozen Jedi and 50,000 people. However, things don't go according to plan as Chancellor Palpatine had already planned for the project's failure, sending a Separatist force to intercept and destroy the outbound flight, and the reason is that Palpatine is afraid that the project would provoke an invasion from the Yuuzhan Vong, but that's a story for another time. Anyways, just before Joris left, Palpatine managed to get a hold of his blood sample, something which he would later use to clone him, but the plan to destroy the outbound flight didn't really go according to plan either, as the Trade Federation fleet ends up encountering a Chiss fleet led by Thrawn himself. But Sidious and Thrawn end up coming to some sort of agreement, so you can kind of see the connection between the two here. Meanwhile, on board the outbound flight, Joris turns into some sort of a tyrant, gradually falling to the dark side as he starts to dictate how things should be. He starts to separate Force-sensitive children from their families, dictating room decor, basically running things the way he thinks the Jedi Order should be run. Long story short, the outbound flight comes into contact with Thrawn, and despite Thrawn's attempts at negotiation, it all falls apart due to Joris' refusal to turn his ship around and trying to force choke Thrawn. On. The outbound flight is then destroyed by the Chiss, killing everyone on board, including Joris himself. And the important thing to note here is that Joris also had a Padawan by the name of Lorana Jinsler, who also died during these events. And while Lorana's character is described as having dark hair and grey eyes, which is nothing like Shin, Shin is Balin's apprentice, and this is a confirmed fact. All of which seems too much of a coincidence. And while I don't think that Balin will be an exact copy of Joris and Shin the exact copy of Lorana, and it's clear that they won't be, certain elements of their story might be brought over to the Ahsoka show. Now, the most obvious detail could be that Balin is a clone of a long dead Jedi Master, but I don't think this is the case. At this point, I feel that cloning has been mentioned and used so often that it might start to feel a little overused, and if he were to be a clone, it would create lots of questions about Palpatine's own cloning progress and why it took so long. But what I do think is that Balin and Shin are both fallen Jedi. In my breakdown of the teaser trailer, I noted that Balin and Shin are probably not Inquisitors as their hilts are very different to the standard Inquisitor hilt. Both of these characters seem to have lightsabers that are unique to their own style, indicating that these guys are not Inquisitors. So what if these two were part of the canon equivalent of an outbound flight project that also went south, causing them to get lost for a long time and during this time 
end up falling to the dark side. The both of them getting lost in the unknown regions would also explain how they might have crossed paths with Thrawn and possibly end up joining forces with him. So while I don't think Balin is a corrupted Jedi clone, I do think that he might be a corrupted Jedi. Which would explain why they appear so different and why they might have that orange red lightsaber which Inquisitors don't have. Another theory that might clue us in on their possible backstory, and this one is probably one of the wildest theories out there, is that they might have something to do with the World Between Worlds. And if you're unfamiliar with this name, the World Between Worlds is a mystical plane within the Force, which serves as a pathways and doors to many different points of time and space. It was first introduced in Rebels, and it was how Ezra managed to save Ahsoka from Vader despite it being the past. Although the only known door to it was destroyed by Ezra, you can be sure that there will be other ways to access it. So the wacky theory that might possibly be true is that both Balin and Shin aren't from the present, but possibly from the past. Possibly Darkseid users or even Sith from a time long forgotten such as the Old Republic. This would explain why there's something about their character design that makes them feel so old. Especially when you look at Balin's lightsaber hilt and his armor. And the actor that plays Balin Balin has even come out to say that there is something Arthurian and legendary about his character, possibly cluing us in on just what sort of time period he is from. And if they are both truly from a different time period, it would also explain why their lightsabers look so different. As we know, the Old Republic time was filled with all sorts of lightsaber colors, so them being from an older time period like that would really explain why. And if you take a closer look at both of their respective names, they do have some deep connection with Norse mythology. For Balin, his family named Skull, and Shin, her family named Hati, are both names of wolves that chase the sun and moon in Norse mythology. And their names have deeper meanings as well, with Skull meaning shadow or deceiver, and Hati meaning hatred or enemy, all of which might come to characterize their respective characters and might clue us in on what exactly they are looking for. Four. During the breakdown of the teaser trailer, I deduced that Ahsoka was being hunted specifically by Shin Hati, but the question to ask is why? And it depends on which theory comes true. If it is the case that both Balin and Shin are fallen Jedi from Outbound Flight, then it might be the case that they're hunting down Ahsoka to ensure that she will not expose Thrawn's return. At least not until Thrawn is ready to emerge. On the other hand, if the two of them are really brought to the present by the mystical plane of world between worlds, then they might be looking for Ahsoka as a means to find their way home or as a means to find more power. And the reason why they would be hunting for Ahsoka is simply that she was one of the few who has direct experience going through this plane. So perhaps they think that she might have the answers that they are looking for. Anyways, that's all I could find about Balin and Shin, and I'm super excited for the Ahsoka show and can't wait until they drop an official trailer. So do you have any theories regarding who these guys are? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. As always, I am the Lost Acolyte, and I have spoken.